everybody. This month's box, the intermediate box, is our Hothead Foxy Nymph. Um, I've already got my bead on my hook here. This is a size 12 hook. I'm going to go ahead and start my lead, which is just uh, 0.015. And I'm just going to give it a couple of wraps here, four or five turns. And then uh, I'll slide that up against the bead. I like the lead there because it kind of helps build the profile of the body and then also helps seat that bead on there nice and tight. You could add super glue at this point if you wanted to. Um, and then if you need to adjust to add more weight, you can. And then I'll start my thread here behind the lead and just kind of build a thread dam right up against the lead and up on top of it. I like using flat thread, so I have UTC 70. And you can obviously adjust the color um, if you want a hot spot. Um, collar on this. So I'll wrap back. I'm going to tie my wire in next and I've gone ahead and I'm using black wire which you'll be getting in your box and um, you can adjust that as well as if you want a diff different color but I just tie that into the side of the hook facing me and then bring that thread all the way up to behind the bead wrapping that wire in just so it continues to build a nice even taper on this fly. We'll tie in our pheasant tail next and with the pheasant tail, I just do four or five fibers here of, of pheasant tail. I like it to be about um, half the length of the hook, maybe just a little bit longer. Um, I've found, obviously, if you've tied with pheasant tail, you know it's pretty brittle. After a couple fish, it'll fall apart on you. So I kind of keep a shorter tail so it lasts a little bit longer. Um, but it's pretty brittle stuff. So I'll just um, tie that tail in and trim out that excess. And you can use that same piece if you want to um, wrap the body here. And I always tie in from the tip side first, and that just kind of helps create that natural taper as the, the tips are a lot skinnier than the butt section of those pheasant tails. So now I'll just wrap my pheasant tail up. Just nice, even wrap. So we just want to make sure that we're covering our thread body here. And hackle pliers are definitely a recommendation here if you have them, but I'm not using them here just to show you can do this if you don't have hackle pliers. And it, just take your time and just work that slow. After each turn, you'll notice I just push my finger against that back side of the hook to hold that pheasant tail. So if it slips out of my hand, I've got a hold of it there. So I wrap it up to the bead, bring my thread over, give that a couple of good tight turns there and then we can trim off the excess. So now we'll wrap our wire, and I'm just gonna go ahead and, and counter wrap this wire up the body. You just wanna make nice even turns. It usually takes about four turns if you space them evenly to get up to behind the bead to where I'll tie that off and trim it down. Once you have that, you can go ahead and cut that wire free, break it off, and then we're ready for our dubbing. So fox squirrel dubbing, if you guys have followed us for a while, you'll know I love fox squirrel dubbing. It's a great substitute for soft hackle, um, but I just like the bugginess that it gives too. So it it's, moves really well in the water, and it cases over the fly really well. So I've just put a little pinch on there, and I'll wrap that right up behind the bead. And now here what I'll do is I've got my thread behind the bead and before I go ahead and do my collar or whip finish, I pick that dubbing out with a brush. That just kind of helps save your thread. So if you've whip finished and then start to brush, um, you know, those Velcro fibers can catch your thread and start to split it apart. So I like to do it here before I've wrapped my collar. And then I'll go ahead and bring my thread around and build that collar up a little bit. At this point you're done, you can add a drop of head cement or super glue here if you'd like. Uh, go ahead and whip finish. This fly has been great. I've fished it traditionally without a hot spot bead, um, but recently I've been using this hot bead on it and we thought that it'd be something that you guys would enjoy, something that um, I've really liked and have had a lot of success with it. So go ahead and fish it and let us know how you do. Mm -hmm.